April 15th, a date etched in the mind of every real estate investor and every investor as the day that you need to get your taxes in, right? But what if you're a passive real estate investor like me, like many of us, and find yourself in need of more time? look at why many investors opt to file for tax extensions or not file their taxes until October. We're going to look at why this is a common practice now and how it could be a strategic move for you. Managing your real estate investments, even your passive real estate investments, often comes with a set of complexities, especially when the crunch time of tax season rolls around. Now, filing for an extension gives you an additional six months to work through a lot of those complexities and potentially find new strategies to leverage those tax benefits that you may not have thought of in the shorter window between January 1 and April 15th. The best part is that there's no penalty for filing. It's it's important to note, however, that this doesn't extend the time that's required to be able to pay your taxes. So if you think you might owe anything and work with your CPA on this, you should probably go ahead and make that payment. It's also worth noting that you aren't more or less likely to get audited based on filing later. In fact, it's actually really common practice. Real estate investments, especially passive ones, bring out complex financial situations that luckily you don't have to manage. However, the accounting and bookkeeping team has a lot to do in this time period. This can involve detailed reporting, scrutinizing transactions, or simply waiting for all the financial information to align. This is all to assemble that K-1 form that you need as a passive investor to be able to give to your own CPA. K-1s are crucial information for passive investors that detail your share of the income, the deductions, and the credits. However, these forms can often arrive really close to that April 15th deadline, and often you're going to find that your CPA is requesting for an extension to be able to get this all done. There are also benefits to filing an extension. It actually gives you more time to gather the necessary documents, both you and your the accounting team working to produce those K-1s. It also allows you extra time to ensure that you're maximizing the deductions particularly the depreciation and any other investment-related expenses. Your goal as an investor is likely to invest more and more every year. At least that's my, my goal as an investor. My goal this year is to invest $50,000 passively in real estate syndications. I'll also be allotting all my cash flow and my proceeds for the next 10 years back into other investments to be able to fast track and juice up these first five to 10 years of me investing passively in real estate. But with all of these investments come more and more expected K-1s every year. And the chance that I'm going to need to file an extension every year gets increased with the more K-1s that I'm expecting, the more teams that are working to assemble all this complex financial data. Now that doesn't bother me because I know that when they have more time, when my CPA has more time, in fact, we can think more strategically about leveraging all of these advantages. This is why I diversify, to get into all these different asset classes. But I also have to realize that with diversification might come a little bit more complexity on the tax side. Again, filing for an extension can be strategic on your part as an investor. It's not just about buying time, it's about ensuring accuracy, maximizing your benefits, and ultimately protecting your investments. Remember, strategic planning involves how and when you file your taxes. So make sure you consult with your CPA or your tax strategist to figure out what's the best scenario for you.